how it started. It started out like as a actual thing and then turned into a joke in a way. Reapers, what's his good? It's your boy Laser. He's about to get another scary reaction video. He's on the scary content. So I continue to do that face. Rena, top 15 Facebook posts with creepy backstories. Because there's so many creepy ass fucking posts out there that just be making our timbers shiver. If you just scary content, you want to scare music like this feature. It's me, that button. You subscribe to the notification bell icon. I'll stream every night on Twitch. Go. Channel streams fucking amazing. Let's dive straight in this veil. Number 15, The Blast. If you're gonna go out with a bang, might as well do it right with 25 what? gallons of gas. Who the fuck still uses Facebook, bro? Propane, I forgot Facebook even Michael existed. McNeil wrote chillingly on Facebook beneath a photo of those same items. The 48 year old Long Island man was going through a divorce that included a restraining order against him. Sorry, bro. It's always the motherfuckers with this hairstyle, this exact hairstyle. I swear. When it appears he planned what was about to unfold. McNeil was unaccounted for by police, who would spend the following days digging through the charred remains of the garage that he'd blown to smithereens. The captioned photo appeared on Facebook in December 2013. He claimed the propane and gas were reserves for the winter, but when police responded to a domestic dispute call at the McNeil home, is that like the, on a is that like the only brand when it comes to gas? <laughs> I don't Tuesday know. night in August 2014, is that gas? The, the like, blast that is. soon followed. The officers had been escorting the man's wife and daughter down the driveway when the garage erupted into a fiery pit. As one might have guessed, the fire appeared intentionally set upon investigation by authorities. Number 14, <sighs> MH17. When a Dutch man was about to board a Malaysian flight at Amsterdam's airport in 2014, he snapped a photo of the airplane on the tarmac. If it disappears, this is what it looks like. He wrote on Facebook, assumably making a dark quip about the Malaysian flight that disappeared without a trace over the Indian. That shit was like, motherfuckers were searching that, for, searching for that shit for like what, like eight years ish. It was bad. Eight years, nine years. I don't fucking know. Ocean, a mere five months earlier, little did the man know what was about to happen. The flight he was about to board would soon be taken down over Ukraine. The Dutch passenger named Corpan, posted the picture before boarding with his girlfriend, both of whom did not make it. Boo, he no. lived in North Holland. Many of his friends and family initially wished him a safe trip until his cousin responded with the flight number beneath his post, writing, turns out our cousin Cor was on this plane. It was a horrible thing that happened, and the memory of the preface of the faded flight on Cor's Facebook page is haunting. No. Number 13. Yeah, it's gonna be like the worst thing ever, bro. Like, I know, like, obviously someone dying is tragic enough. But I'm saying, like, just like someone going missing and not knowing what happened to them. That's, like, worse. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, like you don't know if they're still... Like, what if the Malaysian people, like, I don't know, they went through, like, a different universe. I'm kidding. I think apparently they found, like, parts of the plane, like, a while ago. But I remember there was, like, a whole... All these conspiracy theories that the Malaysian plane went through, like, a whole time warp or some shit like that. Went to, uh... Reaperland. Ah, check out my song Reaperland on all platforms. Team, the flood, another terrible event with a creepy backstory, happened more recently with a hurricane that happened in Houston this summer. A 21 year old National Guardsman named Darren Charles Mitchell was caught up in the flood waters in his blue truck. He called his family and managed to post this frightening photo before he was overcome by the water. According to the Independent, he called his brother Roman. Truck driven by missing 21 year old coffee Mitchell to tell him he'd escaped his truck but was trapped. But it was soon after that he posted his final Facebook post showing the rising floodwaters through his windows back inside the truck, which would soon be swept away. All I wanted to do was go home, he wrote. <laughs> Number 12. Poor dude. Seasick. On New Year's Day, January 1st, 2015, the Filipino crew of an ill-fated cargo ship was about to meet their doom, and one sailor, Alexis Paella Bacala, would preface their collective fate on Facebook with a New Year's greeting, a status update with a single word, seasick, and additional info on that seasickness. Those waves be no joke. 
His last words were a reckoning. The storm is coming to us, he wrote, in a reply to a friend questioning where his ship was located. The bulk Jupiter, Bacala's ship, sent out a distress signal that very night, not long after. The ship sank off the coast of Vietnam on January 2nd. Out of 19 crew members, only one made it, and it wasn't Bacala. Perhaps Facebook can be utilized as a means for emergency rescue to keep an eye on early alerts if future ships ever come to similar toil. Number 11. The Couple That Vanished when a loved one disappears, one of the first things people do nowadays is check their social media accounts. And then they post how, like, uh, clout. Uh, they be posting snaps looking for my missing, uh, boyfriend girlfriend. Gotta post everything nowadays, am I right? If they've logged in recently totally not shade. or made any impressions no, like, on their page, shade. family and police will take note, as they did in the case of Charlie Carver and Kayla Brown. The couple from South Carolina disappeared in August 2016. Since their disappearance, loved ones began monitoring their Facebook accounts and, in fact, didn't come up empty. Posts appeared on Carver's account, but the creepy thing was, family insisted that it wasn't the couple posting. Someone appeared to have hacked their account. A week after the pair disappeared, a post claiming the couple was fine showed up on Carver's page. Soon after, some of Carver's history was edited. Life events that never happened were added to his timeline, including the couple- Anti-Batman Club, what the fuck? How dare they insult me like that? What? I'm literally Batman, bro. For fuck's sake, I literally got a Batman tattoo on me. I'm literally Batman. I'm literally him. How is her anti-Batman Club? Those fuckers are losers. We got Quinn, we got uh, Mr. Joker. I don't know who the fuck is that supposed to be Bane? I don't fucking know. Poison Ivy. Uh, that's Two Face, right? There's the penguin. You can't see because I'm blocking, but I see some of the familiar faces there. I think it's a ruler in the very far right. Pregnancy announcement and a house purchase. To make the story even stranger, Carver was going through a divorce at the time, and Brown had told a friend that Carver's soon-to-be ex-wife had been doing all kinds of really crazy scary stuff, including stalking her. The missing couple didn't take their Pomeranian or their belongings when they vanished, leaving many to believe they didn't run off but, rather, had met a much more terrible fate. They were correct to think so. In the end, the ex had nothing to do with the couple's disappearance. Todd Kohlhab was a real estate agent who had hired the pair to do some house cleaning work on his farm near Woodruff, South Carolina. Brown had been cleaning houses for him and his real estate company for a while, <laughs> so face. she didn't think she was in danger. But when they arrived, Todd came out of his garage it's blasting, taking Carver's life on the spot. Brown was then dragged into Todd's garage and kept there for two months because of a social media post by Brown that showed she'd planned to meet Todd at his property and a final ping from her cell phone on the property. Police had a lead. They searched the property, where they eventually discovered Brown chained inside a storage container. What the as fuck? dangerous as Facebook can be at times, it saved a life in this case. What the Number fuck? 10. Happy. In April 2014, a 32-year-old woman was driving down a U.S. highway, Interstate 85 in North Carolina, North Carolina. at 8.30 oh, no. in the morning when she decided to take a selfie and update her Facebook status as she drove. The happy song makes me happy. Wait. Wait, are we talking about the one by Farrell? Wait, is that what the song was called? Wait, that, that's not what it was called, right? Did Farrell make a song called Happy? Hold on. He did, yeah. Are we talking about the Pharrell Williams song, Happy? Or are we talking about My Happy? The happy song makes me so happy, she wrote. <laughs> A moment later, she Does passed it? away. Courtney Sanford had crossed into the Central Reservation, and on the other side was a recycling truck. 73-year-old John Wallace Thompson went off the road as Sanford's car went up in flames. Friends informed police that her post had appeared on Facebook. Around the time of this happening, in a matter of seconds, a life was over just so she could notify some friends that she was happy. 
Lieutenant Chris Weisner said, He noted that doing so isn't worth it, and this incident was a grim reminder to pay attention while driving. Number 9. Facebook Stalker <laughs> Redditor Creepers Be Gone submitted this creepy story to the site's r slash creepypms board a few years ago. In it, she said the exchange between her and a former classmate started innocently enough. At first, I didn't recognize him because the last name was different and he had physically changed quite a bit since the last time I had seen him, she wrote went ahead and accepted the request, and he almost immediately went through all of my pictures and started liking them. You know I mean, dude, when I used to, when I was in my animation uh, horror story phase, I don't even, I wouldn't even call it a phase. I think just watching those, like, when you're bored are fun as shit. Like, I'd just be watching them when I'm not streaming. There'd be nights where I'd just be chilling in here and I'd just be watching them. Those animated horror stories, you know what I'm saying? But I swear, I, I feel like every single one has, like, something to do with Facebook. It's either that or Meagle. That, sh that site got shut down, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, it did. Um, what she found was that his profile was a bit off. He only had a handful of friends and was supposedly engaged. But when she clicked onto his alleged fiance's profile, it too seemed off. No posts and zero pictures of her. Further investigation also showed that this fake fiance was the only one to comment on his posts many of which centered around being misunderstood. The happy couple's writing styles were also identical, with painful exchanges that meant like they were both in their early teens, despite being in their early 30s. Maybe they were a match made in heaven, or could this be part of a creepy mystery? A couple days later, she googled the former classmate's last name, which was different than she'd remembered. Guess what she found out? The man was a convicted offender. His last known address was in a whole other state. Instead of unfriending the guy, she restricted his access to her posts, but kept him on her friends list for pure entertainment value alone. A half a year went by after the friending, not a word having been exchanged between them, and the offender suddenly decided to send this message to her. Hey, would you be interested in going to a game with me tomorrow? It's a word thing. And have an extra ticket, I have to use it. Uh, let me know if you're interested. <laughs> Inbox. Can't read. Time to I can't read. I just, Many I'm in that mood, bro. I just want to fall back to sleep. The local police, this offender not being registered at a local address, and yet consistently checking in at local places, potentially broke a law by not re-registering in his new location. Hopefully, she took the advice. Number Hi. eight. Busted by Facebook. If Busted you've ever nut. had a purse snatched from you, you know the feeling in your stomach as some thief sprints off with not only your money, but all of your personal information. Oh, well, couldn't relate because I don't use a purse. I keep my stuff in my, uh, my pockets. I be carrying stuff in my pee pee hole too. My pee pee hole is massive so I put stuff in it. It's very sticky. Now imagine if that thief started snapping selfies on your phone that were then uploaded to your Facebook account. That's exactly what happened in Georgia when this man snatched a woman's purse from her unlocked car while she ran in to grab her child from daycare. It wasn't until the woman arrived home that she noticed her phone and purse had vanished, but she was in luck. According to police major Jason Bolton, the suspect apparently took a picture Jason of himself Moore? on her phone and due to her settings, it automatically uploaded to her Facebook page. Bolton was sure the suspect didn't know what he'd done. If he had, he would have deleted the pic immediately. When the woman's friend saw the photo on her Facebook page, she alerted her friend, who then told police. The picture quality was so good that the police were thrilled. The guy was so recognizable, gold teeth and all. We've used Facebook in the past to solve some cases or help get warrants, Major Bolton said. But never have we seen a case like this where the potential suspect provided his own picture to us to use in the investigation. Number, Number seven. seven, posts from the afterlife. In 2014, Reddit- Oh look, it's me. That's not me, guys. What's my name, though? I feel so cool. This guy copied my name. How dare he? Only I can have the name Nathan. Nobody else knows what has Nathan. You're telling me there's other Nathans out there? No, literally. I've never met anyone with my name. I'm kidding. Like, maybe a few people. That's it.
But yeah, I forgot there was our Nathans out there, and her name is Emily, so she automatically should uh, be banned from Facebook. Sorry, ASW not sorry. SW posted something terrifying. His passed away girlfriend was messaging him on Facebook. He claims she passed away on August 7, 2012, when someone ran a red light as she was headed home from work. Nate had been in a long-term relationship with her and would have married her, he said, if she was into the idea of marriage. 13 months after her passing, she messaged Nate on September 4th, 2013. Emily's Facebook account had remained active as sort of a memorial. Nate knew Emily's mother had her login and password, so he initially thought it was Susan messaging him from Emily's account. Months passed. Then, in mid-November, after Susan had told Nate she hadn't logged in, he received another message from Emily, one that he thought must be from one of Emily's friends who was screwing with Cinnamon scented Cinnamon scented candles what? Him. Made no sense. Earlier messages from the couple's oh my God. Chat history. Since, what the fuck? A couple months later, Emily began tagging herself in Nate's photos in the empty spaces next to him. In his own words, I would get notifications for them, but the tag would generally always be removed by the time I got to it. This is the first time I actually caught one. Nate started losing sleep. He was angry. Whoever was doing this was being very mean. A self-described social recluse, Nate became even more of a hermit. He decided <laughs> He's to literally me. I literally be make I'm a hermit. <laughs> I I mean well, I work, but besides that I'm a hermit, yeah. Like the fact that if you don't work and you just straight up like if you're 20 bro, like, I'm I I don't like sharing people that don't have jobs cuz some people like you know, are in these situations where like it's kind of hard to get a job. But I'm saying like if you're if you're that person that's like in your 20s, bro, and you don't have a job and you're just choosing not to work and you like still live with your parents, you need to get your life together, bro. The fact that some people think are like doing that, there's nothing wrong with living with your parents. Nowadays, it's per perfectly normal. I mean, I like you know what I'm saying, but when we technically I live with my parents in a way, like I stream in a barn that's like separate from my parents' house, but um. There's nothing wrong with living with your parents nowadays, especially in this economy. The only reason that I can see living with your parents is, like, weird or wrong is, like, if you're not doing anything. Like, you're just living with them, but you're not doing anything. You're not contributing in any way. Like, you're not pursuing any fucking college, whatever, job. You're just sitting in the house and being, pretending you're still a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta be doing something. Like, I, I work full-time, so it's like... Talk to Emily's hacker. And I do this. Ten days the later, the hacker answered, again with messages recycled from their past conversation. The messages kept coming. Despite Nate I'm having coming. changed Emily's password numerous times, they kept coming through April and May. Finally, Nate memorialized her page. And when he did, she responded with the messages Nate had sent the day Emily passed. Now, every time he hears the- uh, you see this message, please rate me- what the fuck? Facebook ping. He wonders, is it Emily? Number six, revenge. If you ever date a police detective and it goes bad, don't try to impersonate or defame him. Seems like common sense. But it wasn't to Dana Thornton when she and detective Michael Lissandra broke up in 2007. Shut off, yeah. Dana wanted to get even. So what did she do? She created a- Dude, there's just, there's just a spider on the right of me that just casually came webbing down. I gotta kill this bitch real quick. Fake Facebook profile for Michael, who is- let me remind inspires you, me so ridiculous detective and use this fake Michael to badmouth his career and lifestyle choices. I'm a sick piece of scum with a gun, she wrote in one post. This was not just a lover scorned. The detective saw this impersonation for what it was, identity theft. When Michael took his ex to court, she pleaded so not guilty. Superior Court Judge David Ironson was on the case, however, and he noted that the evidence did, in fact, show that Dana had injured her ex's reputation. This revenge, it seems, was not so sweet. Number 5. Creepy Stranger Facebook or any other social networking site can sometimes be a scary place, especially for children. 
And when older strangers I start liking ugly. or commenting a little too frequently on a child's posts, it's almost always a red flag. This is what happened to Taylor Oakley when she befriended a stranger by the name of George. A likely Georgie. Alias, a stranger who just so happens to be a 40 to... Th does he offer uh, balloons? Wait, no, correction. Does he uh, get his hand ripped off after getting balloons from a sewage? 50 year old man. In one post, Georgie. Taylor wrote, like for a massage, she misspelled the word message, but George was quick to be as creepy as possible, commenting with a suggestive, a massage, eh? Well, goodness then, haha. -ha. Taylor chose to ignore him. Nice move. Although I would have gone one step further and blocked him. Why she got those Jeff the Killer lips? Look at her fucking lips. Oh my god. <laughs> Jeff the Killer lips. <laughs> Here, let me cut my lips. Because on the next post, which the young girl posted that she felt ugly, likely shooting for some support from friends, she got another response from George, asking the girl to message him. Hopefully, Taylor did not, but whether she did or not, George wasn't done creeping on her profile. When Taylor posted a selfie, his immediate response was to tell her she was very beautiful, and after she replied with a thank you, he went on to say how mature and angelic she looked. Taylor replied, reminding the creepy old man that she didn't know him, that's when Taylor's George, friend, you grab Alexander, a dropped in to save the day with none other than a meme. George responded by saying that he had a wife and family. Dude, I swear, internet arguments be the best thing ever. Like, it just be like a brick wall talking about a brick wall, pretty much. Like, it just never ends, you know what I'm saying? It's like you're going to go nowhere with it. Because every single creepy old dude... Uh, <laughs> Like, what even is that? As you can't read. Like That's why you stopped reading it. Shut up. Proof that he wasn't being creepy. What happened to George afterwards remains a mystery. Number four, burglar login. You can learn a lot from bad thieves. Like, don't log into Facebook when you're in the middle of burglarizing a home. That's what Nicholas Wegg did when inside a house in St. Paul. Not why does every psychopath killer always got their eyes like... Why do they always got those like big ass ears? It's always those. It's always that ear, bro. It's always that type of ear. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like that with every psychopath, every fucking, you know, weird ass. Like my ears are not even close to like my ears are not like that. Fuck, they're not like that. Like they're not pointy. I can't explain. Like. I swear, their ears are always like big as shit. Mine aren't that big. I don't know. Lee, did he check his Facebook and leave it open on Wood's computer? But he also left his belt, jeans, and a pair of Nikes behind. Hmm. Mm. Seems almost as though he wanted to get caught. When Wood found Wig's Facebook account open on his computer, he posted that Wig had entered his home and that any information would be helpful. Guess who contacted him with information? Nicholas himself. Wig suggested that they meet up so he could return Wood's cell phone and get his discarded clothing back. Wood agreed to it, but then called the cops as he arrived. Wig was taken into custody. Where's that tattoo? <coughs> oh, fuck, my bad. Sorry, I didn't talk about that. was a nasty sneeze. Imagine shitting. The fact that some people actually do that, the fact that it happens to some people. Some of you will be sneezing and they take a shit at the same time. Like, what the fuck? Number three, the demon. Some of the creepiest Demon's posts on head. Facebook tend to it's go bad. viral. This is one Spiritual of them. Warfare. In it, an image posted by Richard Christensen appears to show what some are calling what the fuck a demon is around there? and others are calling an angel. The tagline angel written man? by Richard read, What do you see in this picture for real? Anybody? The dark, looming figure in the photo appears to have large wings and spikes atop its head as it hovers in someone's yard. Since its posting, the photo has been shared more than 60,000 times across the platform, and yet, no one can seem to agree on what the creepy object is. And what, the hell, what the hell do you see in this picture for reals? Anybody? Angel Wait, or what? a demon or some other scary creature Number two, Number two, schools be warned. 
During the creepy clown mania of 2016, Green Bay and De Pere area schools became a target. I forgot this shit existed, bro. I made a whole, like, uh, short on it on my other channel. This shit was eight years ago. You feel old? Wait. Yeah, 2016 was, like, eight years ago. Feel old? Hella. Schools that we will be targeting on Monday, October 10th, 2016 are... Southwest, East, West, Preble, Washington, Franklin, Lombardi, Edison, The Post Red. The account which posted this message had been created the same day. Police presence was boosted around the schools in question, and precautionary measures were taken to ensure school safety. At the time, yes, creepy yeah. clown sightings were happening across the country, and this targeted Facebook- It all started, too, in, like, a fucking forest, right? I remember it, how it started. It started out, like, as a actual thing, and then turned into a joke, in a way. Kinda. Some motherfuckers were actually crazy, and, like, I think there was, like, killings, like, dead ass. But, um, all I remember from the clown sightings was, I remember hearing- First hearing about it, I remember it started out in, like, some forest. I think it was, like, South Carolina, right? I don't know if it was South Carolina. I just remember it started out- in like some force and then motherfuckers started like doing it, and that's how it became a whole ass like trend <sighs> damn 2016 was a fever dream i want to go back but at the same time i don't you know post was not an isolated incident in fact the trend continued in houston with a facebook group calling themselves ain't clowning around the page made a post that took things a step further, claiming children would be taken and teachers having their lives taken as they walked to the parking lot. Number one, wanted man gets caught after breaking into a home. In oh Florida my County God! Ohio. That next a whole ass bros a whole ass Slurpee can. See, bros build like a Slurpee. That made sense, right? Look at you. I just know this motherfucker. Be going crazy at the the barbecue, bro. I just know for a fact he'd be stealing all the. I just know for a fact he'd be stealing all the patties at the the barbecue. <laughs> that made no sense. Yo, Andrew Marco. See, I'm saying shit. I was an ass. Police. An alert was posted to the Butler County Sheriff's Office Facebook account for Markham as they were searching for him with a litany of creepy convictions. Markham, brazen as can be, decided to pitch in his own two. I ain't tripping. Half of them don't even know me. The sheriff's office. If you could stop by the sheriff's office, that'd be great. <laughs> Dude, that's gotta be. The <laughs> oh no. Sense on the post writing, I ain't tripping. Half of them don't even know me. The so fucking reply through the, the fucking ratio though. <laughs> Look at the ratio, bro. <laughs> Look at the ratio. Oh fuck, my big ass head. The Butler County Sheriff's Facebook account. If you could stop by the sheriff's office, I don't know why. Same funny about ratios. Like Sheriff likes, Richard you know. Jones turned up the heat on Twitter with a photo of a jail cell in Butler County Jail and a simple message to Andrew confirming that they had his room ready. What the fuck? Markham seemed to love being on the country's wanted list, but he didn't love it when officers traced his location with help from tipsters. Nor did he love it when he finally turned himself in and had to take this sad faced mug shot. The department was happy to have this. Bro, it looks like he's. <laughs> Motherfucker, it looks like he. Uh, it looks like me after I didn't get to eat the fucking. Uh, I didn't get any cookies at like a grocery store when I was young. When I was young, I used to just want those. You know, those cookies with like the frosting on it, the pink frosting, all that shit. People think those are nasty. I don't give a fuck. They, they taste good. I don't give a fuck if they make your mouth dry. They taste good. And off the streets, they even seemed a little smug about it, posting that Markham wouldn't be on social media for a while because there's no access in jail. Damn, Thanks for checking. Well, guys, this was a video. I hope you enjoyed it. Which one of those Facebook posts is most creepy? Enjoy scary content. Most scary features to do. I'll see you next one. Peace.